Doing more practice on derivative of inverse functions, let me tell you this. The mathematics on this page is not hard. The hard thing is reading the problem and knowing what to do. Once you figure out what to do, it's easy to do. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So we're going to do number two first. It says let f of x equal this nice little polynomial. Part A, everybody in class should be able to do this. It says find the point on the graph of f whose x coordinate is 1. What do you do? Plug in 1 for x. 1 comma. That's... What do you get when you plug 1 in? 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, minus 1 is 3. Okay, it is 3. Part B, everybody in this class should be able to do. Find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f at the point you just found. How do you find the slope of a tangent line? Take the derivative. You set it equal to 0? No. Plug in the 1. Okay, I'm going to write the derivative up here. F prime of x equals 5x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 1. Okay, then I'm supposed to take and put F prime of 1 equals, you get 5 plus 6 plus 1 equals 12. 12. Told you the, e the math is easy. The math is not hard. Okay, now number letter C, the wording is a little bit strange. It says, find the point on the graph of F inverse whose X coordinate is 3. Okay, do you know the inverse equation? No, okay. But it does tell me the X coordinate is supposed to be 3 on the inverse. So Y is 3 on the right. Right. So if X is 3 on the inverse, then Y is 3 on the regular, so that just means the answer is 1. Okay, do you understand the, the thinking behind that? Okay, now, part D is the derivative of the inverse. Find the slope of the tangent line, that means derivative, to the graph of the inverse at the point you found in C. So they want you to find f inverse's derivative at what point? At 3, because it says at the point you had in C. Okay, now, I'm discovering that you really need to understand the formula like we did before. When we did the Molly method the other day, and we got on that bottom row, and we got a derivative, and we got a number, what did we do over here to get the final answer to that number? We put one over it. We flipped it, didn't we? So the derivative final answer is 1 over f prime at which number? 1. Okay? These two numbers will usually not be the same, but these two numbers are these two numbers. Okay? So the derivative of the inverse at 3 is equal to 1 over the derivative at 1. Now, did we find the derivative at 1? Yes, we did. It's right here. It's 12. So the final answer is 1 over 12. Now, did you really have to show all of that work? No, but I'm trying to show you where it comes from. Because sometimes they'll give you some really strange numbers, and you're not quite sure what they're asking. But if you look and you see, oh, these two were an ordered pair up here. Therefore, all I'm supposed to do is take the slope and flip it. Okay, that's the point. Any questions before I move on to the next part? All right, turn over on the back, please. We're going to do number seven. Number seven. Okay. Number seven says census figures for the U.S. population in millions are given below, where P is the population in millions in year T. Assume that P is increasing as the table values suggest. So basically, in 1900, there were 76 million people in the United States. In 1990, there were about almost 250 million people in the United States. Okay? Now, part A says, find P inverse of 76 <coughs> and P inverse of 205. Now, some of you are going to already know what the answer is. And some of you are going to look at that and go, I'm not quite sure what they're asking. Okay? 
I like what Ben said a minute ago, and I'm going to repeat it because it really makes a good sense. If you're looking at an inverse function, what is in parentheses used to be a y value. Used to be. Now it's an x. So look at the data up here. What did the 76 used to be paired with? What is it paired with? 1900. So 1900 goes here. You see what I'm saying? That used to be a y value, now it's an x. What is the number that it was paired with that was the x that is now a y? Let me say that one more time. This used to be a y, now it's an x. What is it paired with that, that is now a y? 1900. Okay. This used to be a y. What was it paired with? 1970. 1970. <coughs> the x became y and the y became x. Okay. All right. Part B. It says estimate p prime of 1900 and p prime of 1970 with a forward and a symmetric difference quotient. Ooh, we haven't done that in a while, respectively. Okay. Now. So we're going to do P prime of 1900 first. And they said you have to use a forwards difference quotient, which makes sense because there's nothing before it. Okay. If we're doing a forwards difference quotient with 1900, I can't just move forward like 1901 or 1902. I have to use what's in the chart because I don't have an equation. So what should I pair this with? Which one? 1910 is the best one because the closer you stay, the better of an estimate you have. So I'm going to use 1900 and 1910. So if I'm going to do the difference quotient, which one do I do first? 1910. And then 1900 over 1910 minus 1900 equals. P of 1910. This is a regular function. So 1910 is paired with 92 minus 1976 over 10. What is 19? What's 92 minus 76? 16 over 10, which is 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 1.6. 1 okay. All right. Now. Raise your hand if you can tell me in a sentence what this number means. In terms of time and population. Okay, it's not a percent. Okay. Okay, it's a rate of change. I agree with that. Okay, but what would it be labeled? Million people per year. So between 1900 and 1910, the population changed at a rate of 1.6 million people per year. Does that make sense? That's what this is. So between 1900 and 1910, the population increased at about 1.6 million people per year on average. Okay? This formula right here, what formula does it look like? Some other formula that we use? Average rate of change. F of B minus F of A. Okay. I'm going to change colors just to make the second part, the P prime of 1970, not get mixed in with this. P prime of 1970 equals. It's going to be another difference quotient. But it says symmetric. So I need to do on each side. So, Sippy, which two am I going to use? 1960 and 1980, exactly. So, P of... 1980 first, and then 1960 second, over 1980 minus 1960. Okay, we're talking about the 20 year span where probably most of your parents were born. I was born in that span right there. Okay, 1980 is paired with 226.5 minus 1960 is 179 over 20. And I'll tell you right now that the answer is 2.375. So the population between 19, or actually this is an estimate of the derivative at 1970. So 
the rate of change in population at 1970 is approximately equal to 2.375 what? Million people per year. So, was the population increasing faster as time went on? Yes. yes. And it is still increasing much faster. Okay? So, at the beginning of the century, at the beginning of the 20th century, very slow increase. Now it's much quicker. Okay? All right. Now, part C says find P inverse prime of 76. Okay. You need to know that P inverse prime of a number is equal to 1 over P prime of something else. You need to know that. Okay, what number goes in this parentheses right here? 1900, because 76 and 1900 are a pair. So 1900 goes here. Okay, so it's 1 over the answer I've got for 1900, which was 1 1.6. I will let you stop right there. Okay, I'm not going to make you do the long division by hand. That's cruel and unusual punishment. Okay. So now P inverse prime of 205 is equal to 1 over P prime of 1970 because 205 and 1970 are paired. 205 and 1970 are paired. So that would be 1 over this answer, 2.375 right there. questions. It's not that hard. It's just understanding what to do. Do you agree with me? Yeah. We haven't done that much number crunching, have we? This is reading the problem. Okay. No questions? Okay, we're going to do number eight, and then I'm going to let you lose to do the rest yourself. Okay? Read number eight silently to yourself real quickly. Just read it. A lot of letters, a lot of numbers, kind of hard to tell what goes where. Agreed? Okay. But let me tell you how to dissect this problem. There are two key words in this problem that you need to see. That one right there and the fact that it asks for a derivative. Anytime a problem asks, gives you an inverse and a derivative in the same question, that's when you do the Molly method. Okay. Now, this one was a little more straightforward because you found the derivative first and then you found the inverse. But they just give you a bunch of numbers. If we put down the chart <coughs> that we learned two days ago, everything will fall into place. So, this time, however, it tells us that G is the inverse function. So, I'm going to write F and F inverse like we used to, but out to the side, I'm going to write that equals G because it tells us that it does. So, down here, I'm going to put F parentheses and G parentheses instead of F inverse. And then F prime and G prime. It's a little bit easier when you use G's. Okay. Let's take what they gave us and put everything where it goes. First of all, we're trying to find G prime of negative 2. So put the negative 2 next to the G prime and box in what comes after us. That, that's where I know I'm, once I got that box foiled in, I'm done. Okay. Now, Let's go back over here. G of negative 2 equals 5. So here's G. Negative 2 goes there. 5 goes there. Agreed? Now, go straight across. What two numbers go here? 5 and negative 2. On the first row, it's just flip them because it's inverses of each other. F of Because it said G of negative 2 is 5. So f of 5 is negative 2. These are inverses of each other. So the x's and y's just switch. No flipping, just switching. Okay? Then they say, the next thing, f prime of 5 is negative 1 half. These two numbers straight up and down for both for f should match. And they do. These two match, so we're good here. What goes in the box? 
Negative 2. The reciprocal of this. The reciprocal of this. Whatever goes here. Okay. Answers are switched here. They're flipped here. Okay. So the negative two, one half becomes a negative two. I'm done. That's the answer is negative two. Why do you keep the negative? Because when we did these up here, the formula says that the inverses is just one over. It's not the negative one over. The formula says that it's just one over. Okay? And when we did the problem the other day, we did the numbers, they all came out to be the same sign. Okay? Any other questions? This is the assignment. Okay, go back to the front of this paper and please write number two right there because this is worksheet number two. On the board it says worksheet number two, you're going to do all of it. There were, how many questions? Ten? I've done three, so you got to go do seven. All right? So you have the rest of the period to work on this.